Pests are creatures with their own motives and agendas, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. How are pests an indication of plant stress then? Stressing my peppers doesn't create aphids. Can you elaborate on this subject, please? Well, yeah, I can. It's, it's a bit like how wolves shape rivers. Right? You introduce wolves to the Yellowstone National Park or reintroduce wolves. What they do is they take out the weaker deer. Right? They pull the deer back, the populations of deer back from the edges of the rivers. Right? They allow regrowth to happen. The bear population comes up that helps in the predation on the oversupply of other organisms that are out of balance. Now, when you balance the soil, what you're doing is you're building up enormous numbers of beneficial organisms, gazillions, trillions, gazillions of organisms in every tiny bit of soil. At a certain point, the plants are getting all the nutrition they need, but also those organisms start to come out of the soil and go right up over the plant. They almost create a protective shield where they're not, they're not visible to pests because they don't look like weak organisms anymore. They look like the strong organisms. They're not the low hanging fruit that can easily be captured. The, 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 if you're thinking like the, the Yellowstone National Park and the reintroduction of wolves, they didn't go out and take out the strongest deer. They took the weak ones and the, and the, and the babies that weren't growing quickly and the old ones, they took out the weak. Now, when nothing's weak in your garden, like that really healthy looking garden behind me, it's had really high quality compost put in and lots of organic foods. We've had to garden quickly here because we're building a new um, house site here. We're developing a new house. That's why the natural swimming pool is going in and you can hear the building noise. So this had good soil, good compost, good mulch, quite a lot of beneficial Bacteria were introduced with compost teas. There was, there was kind of natural fertilizer put through. And so we really boosted it quick because we, we needed to get gardening fast and it looks fantastic. It's a fantastic color green. Um, it's really lush and abundant. It hasn't taken much work. Not many weeds even germinated because it's too fertile. But there's not a lot of pests. Whatever pests there are are not even worth worrying about because right? we don't need to get precious about everything being perfect. But it, 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 it's really well and truly good enough. See, the plants aren't stressed, right? They don't look vulnerable. They don't look weak. They don't look like a mutant. They look like supercharged superfood, which is what they are. And, and, and the pests and, and aphids, like you were talking about stressing your peppers. Yeah, if you grow a lot of peppers in one place in really infertile soil with very little soil organisms in the ground, they're gonna look really obvious to pests. They might get an, an invasion of aphids. aphids. They're gonna get an invasion of something because you're overstressing the situation. We'll do more of a bio-casual garden, as I mentioned in the previous um, Q&A there, so that we, we add more organic matter than we need. So we have an oversupply of beneficial organisms in the soil. Everything looks super healthy. Everything's charged up with a protective shield of organisms that have come out of the soil and they're covering the plants. They're more or less invisible. They look too healthy to bother with. Um, and and, and that's, that's the way the, the, the predator-prey situation works from the macro to the micro. You just got to get in there and be the orchestrator of these events. And then you can channel into that superfood that will give you super, super permaculture passion to get out there and change the world the way we, need it. we know it needs to be changed.